All right. Um, I'm just going to pray. And then I'll talk about what we're looking at this evening. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to, to meet this evening. It's not ideal on Zoom, but we're thankful that we get the opportunity to hear your word, even though we'd love to be in person. Um, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us where we are in um, Edinburgh and um, that you would help us think through what it looks like to be men and women of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, uh, as I, like I said, two weeks ago, we started this little series on the spiritual disciplines. And two weeks ago, I just looked ago, I looked at why we do why why discipline is important and motivation for it. Um, and we saw that was important because um, if we are not motivated right, then discipline turns very quickly into um, kind of drudgery, kind of um, you know, not really wanting to 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 do the things that God has called us to do with the right motivation. So uh, tonight we're looking at Bible intake and why the Word of God is important for our, for our walk with the Lord. And um, I'll probably say that this and, and prayer um, are probably the most important spiritual disciplines in, in Christian walk. Um, and yet Bible reading and prayer uh, can be something that Christians often neglect in their lives. So uh, some of the reading I was doing this week, did a poll and apparently uh, in America, only 18% of people who, said, who are claiming to be born again Christians said that they read their Bibles daily. Uh, and then only one, and then one in four, sorry, actually admitted they never read the Bible at all. And they might go to church, but they never read the Bible for themselves. So 18% of Christians over there, I'm assuming it's the same in the UK or similar, said they didn't read the Bibles daily and one in four said they never read it at all. Um, and that's kind of a shocking statistic if we think uh, about the fact that the Bible is God's authoritative, authoritative word where he speaks to us um, and that we are um, his creation who need to, to hear from him. Now, before we look at what and how, which I want to get onto a little bit of the practical later on, I just want to spend the first bit of the study just thinking about why why is reading the Bible so important? Uh, why should it be a discipline that we, we cultivate? It's something we talk about a lot, you know, we need to read the Bible. Um, it's helpful for us as Christians, but why why is it important for us to do these things? We'll do, look at the why first, and then we'll look at some practical things to end. Uh, so the first reason Bible intake is important, and when I mean Bible intake, I mean hearing and studying and looking at God's word, uh, is because the Bible is God's word. So uh, if you just want to turn with me to 2 Timothy, we'll be jumping around the place a little bit this evening. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17. Um, and if someone's there, go for it and read it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profit profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thanks, Tracy. So what, what does Paul say about God's word or the Bible or scripture? Is that to me? Anyone. Oh. Can we see a couple of faces? So I don't know. I'm guessing everyone's just listening in without any picture on. It's God's inspired. This is this inspired word from God. Exactly. Yeah. It's breathed out by God. It is God's inspired word. So Bible reading is important uh, and studying the Bible is important because um, Sunday school answer, but important that we remember, it's God's word. It's where God speaks to us. Um, and I just want to stop there for a second because often we say that 
and we know that it's God's word, but we forget that's an amazing thing that the God who created all things, who created you and me, speaks to us because He doesn't have to speak to us, He doesn't have to give us His word, but yet He has chosen to speak to us and He's chosen to, to give us His word. Um, and His word is powerful, it's authoritative, and His word expresses and reveals who He is. So if I asked you this evening, how do you get to know someone? What would you say? If I asked you, how do you, if you want to get to know someone, how, how would you get to know them? Communication. Yeah, communication. You, you need to spend time with someone uh, uh, and to talk to them. And their words reveal to you who they are uh, and what they are like. And that's the same with God's word. It reveals who he is. Uh, and what he's like. And these words and this conversation that he has with us through his word is the most important conversation out there. So if I was to say to you tomorrow, the Queen is going to make a special announcement to us about the future of the UK. It's going to be really important, um, and it's from the Queen. Even if you don't like the Queen, you probably tune in just to see what she has to say if it's got to do with your future. Uh, our country or, or the UK, you probably tune in. Well, the Bible is where God announces to us every day through his word, who he is, what he's like, and how he wants us to respond to him. And therefore, it's important that we hear from him through his word and read it. Now, people often say in response, I don't have time. I don't have time to read God's word. Uh, in my day, I'm so busy with my job, I'm busy with the kids maybe, I'm busy with my social life, this and that. But that's a rubbish excuse, isn't it? Because we all have time. Um, we just make time for the things that we want to make time for. Apparently, uh, again, this is a US stat, but I'm assuming it's not too dissimilar to the UK. Uh, but apparently in America, the average person watches 70 hours of TV a month. So that's 18 hours a week, 70 hours of TV a month, 18 hours a week. That's on average. That's a lot of time, isn't it? That's without Facebook, social media, gaming thrown in as well. Apparently, you can actually read through the Bible in 70 hours too. So if an average American replaced their 70 hours of watching TV for reading through the Bible each day, then they'll get through the Bible in a month if they spent 70 hours. I'm not saying you would, but I'm just um, using it as an illustration. Even if you were to cut a little bit of your TV out uh, that we watched to read God's words, we'd have time, wouldn't we? Um, and so it's not about time. It's just about planning. It's about remembering um, that this is God's word and we need to take it seriously. And we need to think through how we are going to incorporate it into our lives. Um, I read a cool story as well this week um, about a, a man, I don't know when it was, I think it was maybe 20 or 30 years ago, but this man uh, in the book I was reading just became a Christian, uh, and just as he had become a Christian, I think it was a couple of months into his Christian walk, um, he was near an explosion, and in that explosion he lost his eyesight as well as the use of both his hands. Um, and he was really gutted about that because he really wanted to read God's word and find out more about the Bible. Uh, and so doing some research, he found out about a lady who um, could read the Bible uh, through Braille, but using her lips because she had lost her sight and her, her hands as well. So he tried that. Um, he found, must have found the Braille or asked someone to get a Braille Bible for him. And he started to try and read it with his lips, but he found out that his during the explosion that the nerve endings had gone on his lips, so he couldn't read the Bible using his lips on the braille. So, what did he try next? He tried his tongue, and he began to work out in braille by his tongue what the word said, and he began to read through the Bible consistently through that. So no hands. No eyes, no lips, mm -hmm. just his tongue and that discipline because he really wanted to hear from God and really wanted to hear his words. 
uh, he put the effort into to be able to do that, which is an amazing feat if you think about it. Um, but he did that because he knew that God's word is his word. The Bible is God's word. It's breathed out. And so he wanted to make sure that he was filling his mind with it. So it's not about timing. Uh, it's not about how much time we have. It's about what we spend our time doing. So that's the first reason it's God's word. The second reason um, it's important to read God's word is because there's a great blessing in reading God's word and hearing from him each day. Um, Someone would, would turn with me to Psalm 19. And so I want to read verses 7 to 11 for me. I'll do that. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Thanks, Donald. So again, open question. What does the psalm writer say here are the effects of reading God's words? Changes the inside. Yeah, changes the inside. Makes us rejoice. Makes us rejoice, yeah. Makes us wise. Makes us wise. Restores the soul. Restores the soul, yeah. Someone saying lightens the eyes. Someone say that already. Yeah, me. I think about changing. Oh, right. I meant that and lighten the eyes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love some of my favourite verses about God's word in in that psalm. Just the way that He talks about the word of God being perfect and sure and right and pure and clean. Um, but then also talks about the effects it has on us. Like we said, it revives the soul, makes us wise, uh, humbles us. Sorry. Um, it helps us to rejoice, opens our eyes. Um, and I love that description of the word of God as sweeter than honey and more precious than, than, than gold. In other words, the word of God, when we read it, it's good for our hearts, good for our minds, it's good for our souls. It, uh, it blesses us when we, when we read God's word, we study it and we meditate on it. Uh, and I think often, again, we forget that, don't we? day to day and that doesn't mean every day we wake up super excited to read god's words um, thinking all of these things are gonna gonna happen in our lives sometimes it's hard work isn't it setting the alarm a little bit earlier getting out of bed to read god's word sometimes it's a battle isn't it when you've got your favorite program on uh tv and you but you know you haven't read god's word and, and you know it's going to be good for you Sometimes we can't be bothered, can we? Sometimes it's a it's difficult when you're reading through certain books of the Bible that maybe are not as accessible as other books in the Bible. But every time, what the psalmist is saying here is that every time we battle to get into God's word, we are blessed. Uh, when we feel dry spiritually, the worst thing to do is to ignore God's word and think I'm not going to bother going there. Instead, it's to call out to God, ask for his help. Uh, and get into God's word, even if it's just for a few moments, um, to think about what God has to say to us um, and to delight in it. It does give joy. It does give light to our eyes. Revelation 1, 3, you have to turn there, but if you're taking notes, Revelation 1, 3 says, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the word of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear 
and who keep what is written in it for the time is near um, blessed are those who hear the word and keep what is written in it joshua 1 8 9 says 8 to 9 says keep this book of the law always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in it then you will be prosperous and success successful have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged the lord your god is with you wherever you may go the word of god he says meditate on be careful to carry it out and you'll be prosperous and successful and the word of god blesses us um, and encourages us in our christian walk so why read god's word because it is god's word breathed out by him there's great blessing in reading god's word as we just saw from psalm 19 and also because it helps us grow as christians um one person want to get 1 corinthians 10 uh, just verse 6 and 11 separately so 1 corinthians 10 verse 6 and 11 and then someone else want to get romans 15 verse 4 Who wants to be gone, Anna? You, you go for it. First Corinthians uh, 10, verse 6. Now, these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. And then verse 10, and do not grumble as some of them did. Is that the verse you said, verse 10? 11. 11, sorry. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. Thanks, Anna. And Romans 15, verse 4, someone got that? I've got that one. Um, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Thanks, Gillian. So 1 Corinthians 10 talks about the fact that these things are written in the Old Testament. It's particularly talking about, but it applies to the whole scripture so that we might be instructed and so that we might learn from the example of those or not. To follow the example of those in the scriptures when they're being bad and then romans 15 4 reminds us that things have been written down for our instruction uh, to help us endure and for our encouragement so that we might have hope and so meditating god's word reading god's word studying god's word shapes our soul and the bible says it helps us grow in godliness it challenges our sinful hearts it helps us see the glories of the Lord Jesus Christ. It helps us to worship God as we should do. It moves our gaze off ourselves and helps us to move upwards to who God is and what he's done. It adjusts our vision. Uh, as Paul says, it's profitable for teaching, rebuking, for correction and for training in righteousness to the man or woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Uh, it is a place that shapes our souls, encourages us, challenges us, and helps us to grow in the Christian walk. Now, let me just say something about application under this point. Uh, a question I get asked often is, should I expect application to my life every day? Um, should I expect, you know, as I read, open God's words, a random place, for example, start reading it that's going to speak directly into my life circumstances uh, and exactly what I'm facing. Um, and the answer is yes and no. So we think that God is going to give us a specific answer about our specific situation we're facing every day, then it's a no. But if we mean by application that does God every day encourage us and challenge us day by day, then he always does that. Uh, as we read God's word, we're shaped and we're fashioned into the image of Christ. 
uh, as we read God's words and we hear it and we ask God to apply it to our lives, we become doers of God's word as well. And so these three things are important to keep in our minds. It's God's words and therefore we listen to it, hear it and listen to it. It blesses us, encourages us uh, and it also challenges us and shapes us um, as Christians. Let me stop there. Any questions before I move on to just a couple of practical things that I found helpful in terms of reading God's words? Does that make sense so far? Mm-hmm. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Anna. <laughs> okay. So let me, just, let me just look at a couple of practical things um, now. So first question is practically how often should we read God's word? It seems like a simple answer question, but I think it's an important one we think about. Uh, the Bible, when it talks about reading God's word, talks about daily. Okay, so Psalm 1 tells us the blessed man meditates on God's word day and night. Now, let me just clarify that this doesn't make you a better Christian. Um, reading God's word doesn't make you even more loved by God. If you miss a day not reading God's word, doesn't mean you're the worst Christian in the world. And so it's just not about having a guilt complex um, afterwards. But where we can, um, we should prioritise reading God's word each day. Why? Let me read a little quote from a guy called John Blanchard, which I felt, which I found helpful this week. Uh, he says this. Surely we only have to be realistic and honest with ourselves to know how often, sorry, to know how regularly we need to turn to the Bible. And he says this, how often do we face problems, temptations and pressures? Pressures. What do you think the answer is? Daily. Debbie said daily as well. She's behind me. <laughs> how often do we need instruction, guidance and encouragement? Daily. <laughs> Daily. How often do we need to feel the touch of his his touch on our lives? Mm-hmm. Daily. Daily. Every day. Because every day we face temptations, every day we face frailties, every day we face our sin, every day we face our pressures, every day we're battling. And so every day we need to hear from God's word, don't we? Um, think about it this way. How often do we need to eat? <laughs> Debbie's just shouting daily behind me. Yeah. A couple of hours. <laughs> Those who've tried to fast for 24 hours, you know how difficult it is because we are hungry, don't we? Um, we, we don't need to eat daily. I mean, I'm sure we could go a couple of days without food, but we feel weak, wouldn't we, if we didn't eat? Um, now, you cannot say... Do you know what? Today I'm going to eat six months of food so that I don't have to eat for the next six months. That would be silly, wouldn't it? We're not, we're not creatures who are hibernating. Neither can you say, do you know what? I'm going to try and breathe in six months worth of air so that I don't have to do the breathing thing for six, the next six months. Like food, like the air we breathe, we need God's grace through his word, by his spirit, day by day day to sustain us we need food to sustain us we need air to sustain us in the same way in our christian walk we need god's words to sustain us and that's why jesus says man does not live by bread alone but every word that proceeds from the word of god um, and as i often say if you've got time to eat then you've got time to read god's word and we make that a priority we make sure we have our breakfast lunch dinner and all our snacks in between um, it's important that we Put that priority on the God, on the word of God as well. Second question, how can I go deeper into God's word? How can I go deeper into God's word so it, you know, it does affect my life? And let me give you a couple of things that, are, that I think are helpful. And then we're going to do a short exercise together, which I hope is uh, helpful for us as well. So just quickly, how can we go deeper into God's word? Well, firstly, prayer. Um, if we want to hear from God, we need to pray to God that he would speak to us because it is his word 
and he speaks to us by his spirit as he um, softens our hearts and gives us ears to hear his word. So we need to come to God's word humbly and ask him to speak to us. First thing. The second thing is plan. Okay. If you want to get fit, you need to have a plan, don't you? If you want to do a diet to be more healthy about your eating, again, you have to have a plan. If you want to work hard, you need a plan for your week. That's why Donald's now got a diary. And he'll be super organised. Uh, we have a plan as well when we're thinking about reading God's words. It doesn't just simply happen magically out of thin air. Uh, that means deciding what time you're going to put in your day to read God's word. That means you might need to set an alarm. It means you might need to choose a book to study. It means you might need to buy material to help you understand God's word. If you don't have a battle plan, then it's not going to happen. And so pray about it before you read God's word, but also plan, like you would plan your food shop or plan your week when you're going to read God's word and mm -hmm. put it in your diary. Uh, third practical way of helping us go deep into God's word, place. This is really important, I think, as well. Jesus withdrew to spend time with his heavenly father, uh, and it says he did it early in the morning. Uh, and I think place is important as well. Finding a place where you're comfortable, but also finding a place where it's quiet. Mm. Again, where possible to read God's word. Now, now, some of us, I know some of us have kids. We have kids running around. And sometimes it's not always possible um, because, you know, kids are nuts. Um, but um, trying to find a place of quiet is really important. And I think, personally, if you can, the best time to read God's word is to kickstart your day with it, whenever that is. Um, because you don't sin when you sleep. You'll sleep when you're asleep. Oops, I don't know why my messages are going left, right and centre. Um, but I think it's important in the morning, personally, to kickstart your day. If I don't read God's word to start my day, I, I'm, I'm all over the place. And so it's important that we constantly feed our, ourselves God's word and think about the place. Um, the next word, in terms of practical, is study. Um, some of us might be thinking, well, I do read God's word, but I struggle to get anything out of it, or I don't understand it sometimes. Well, that's okay. Um, it's not a problem. I think one of the reasons that sometimes happens um, is because we are just reading God's word, we're not studying God's word. And study helps us to go deeper into God's word. So uh, someone turn to Ezra 7 verse 10, just read that. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. So Ezra studied the law of the Lord, Lord, Lord <laughs> studied the law of the Lord to do it and teach his statutes. We studied it. Now, before anyone starts to think, oh, that sounds like too much work, let me explain what I mean by study. The only difference between reading God's word and studying God's word is that when you study it, you have a pencil in your hand and a notebook. Okay, so what I mean when I mean study God's word, I'm not saying you have to be like a, a New Testament scholar or anything. I just mean when you, as you're reading God's word, have a pencil in your hand, have a pen or whatever it is, and a notepad, and just make some notes as you're going. What's standing out to you as you read? What questions do you have off the back of it? Are there things you don't understand? And then maybe later on you go away and find out about that thing. It doesn't have to be hours and hours of study with lots of commentaries in front of you. I just mean, sometimes, you just need a piece of paper and a pen and to make notes as you're going through. And if there's things you don't understand, go and ask someone. Maybe you're one-to-one, -one, um, maybe find a commentary that's recommended to help you understand those verses um, to get you, so you know more things about God's words. And often we fail to study God's word, not because it's hard 
or because it's dull because it's boring but because often we're lazy not always but often we're lazy um, and sometimes to to get into god's word we have to put the hard work in it's like digging for diamonds you've got to, you've got to dig for them it takes hard work and it's the same with god's word sometimes you have to dig dig deep to get that diamond to get that gold out um for it to encourage and challenge our souls the last point so you know where at the end um the last word is meditation and now when i mean meditation i don't mean sitting on a a yoga rug crossing your legs going um and trying to empty your mind of whatever's in your head that's not what it means meditation means to chew on god's word so it means reading god's word studying it and then allowing it to impact your soul throughout the day it's allowing this the deep truths of god's word to to impact your soul um it's like slowly relishing a meal you know when you eat a nice meal steak and chips at a nice restaurant you don't want to just whop that steak down because you just choke on it um and you don't want to be able to enjoy the tastes of the steak the well, same with god's word we enjoy it as we relish it as we take time thinking about it as we take time chewing over it and meditating on it so that we understand it and how it impacts our lives cool any questions before we do a quick exercise together and then we'll finish anything else that people found helpful in their in their discipline of reading god's words any top tips that i've missed sometimes i I found Andy if well I was actually reading it. I had my grandchild with me. I was reading even though she didn't know what I was saying, but I was reading it out loud and it, it stopped my mind from wandering. Yeah. You know, I was speaking it out and I went and read somewhere that that's what the the Jews do, the mutter, the, the mutter of the words. You know, when they made it, they mutter all the words out loud. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And I think it just makes you I don't know, take it in, but your mind doesn't wander as much. You're listening to what you're actually saying. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely helpful, I think. If you, if you find that helpful reading out loud, then it can be encouraging, yeah. Other thing is turn your phone off as well. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> Aeroplane mode. Cool. Um, just want to do a quick exercise, something that we've done before at the church, but I don't know if everyone's done it before. Um, why don't you just turn to Psalm 100? Boeing going for a double bar study, are And I don't know if you've got a, if people got a pen and paper near them that they can grab. Maybe they are. Have you got a note back? Maybe. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> so if you're some of us like doing Bible reading plans. Some of us like to have Bible notes. But if you want to just have an easy way of reading through the scriptures, you can do this of any bit of the Bible. Um, then here's quite a helpful way of, of, of doing it that I found. Um, get your piece of paper if you've got it and your pen. And um, on one side of the paper, write God. Baby's going to do it and show you how, what it looks like. And put a line right down the middle. And on the other side, right man. Right. <laughs> you see that? Yeah. So one right side, right God, and the other side, right man. <laughs> uh, we're going to read through the psalm, Psalm 100, 
uh, I'm going to read it out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at everything in the psalm that it says about who God is and what he's like. And then we're going to look at what it says how we should about we'll look at how we should respond as his people okay and write down what the psalm says about how we should respond to him okay so let me let me read it out first it says make a joyful noise to the lord all the earth serve the lord with gladness come into his presence with singing know that the lord he is god it is he who made us and we are his we are his people and the sheep of his pasture Enter his gates of thanksgiving and his courts of praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. So, just shout out from where you are. What do we learn about who God is in this psalm? He's our creator. Our creator, yeah. Where else do we find out who God is and what he's like? He's good. He's good. Very in shouting, he is our shepherd. likes worship yeah he's to be worshipped yeah <clears throat> anything else his love endures forever his love endures forever yeah his mercy everlasting mercy everlasting He's faithful. Yeah, he's faithful. Okay. Um, so, what does the psalm say about us? Or how we should, either how we should respond, or what does it say about us as humans? Or... We should make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise, yeah. Doesn't always mean it's, it doesn't always mean it's tuneful, but it's joyful. Serve him with gladness. Serve him with gladness, yeah. We rely on him because we're his sheep. Yeah, we rely on him because we're his sheep. Give thanks to him. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. And we are his people. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So if you were to sum up this psalm in a sentence, how would you sum it up? Um, just write it down at the bottom. Not a paragraph, just like a sentence. It's not a Puritan paragraph, but just like a simple sentence. If you were to sum up the psalm, in 10 to 14 words, how would you sum it up? And get and write that down at the bottom. Andy, is it cheating if I would just say what? The... No, nope, it's not cheating if you want to write something from the Bible. It, well, it's actually from just what the head and the psalmist. Great. That's perfect. Praise the Lord's faithfulness to his people. Great. Sums it up to me. Great. So someone else wanna give me what they've got? Be brave, be strong. <laughs> the Lord is good. Give thanks to him. Amen. Maybe you've got one. Uh, praise the Lord because we are his and he is forever faithful and loving. Amen. So, what, 
what you can do from there now is you've now got a list to praise God for in your prayer life. Thankful that he's God, made us, he's good, steadfast love endures forever. Also got something to respond to him, um, singing to him, praising him, thanking him for his goodness to us. Um, and you've also got things to pray for other people that they would know his goodness and faithfulness and love. And you've now got something to meditate on during the day your sentence that you've put together. You know, he's faithful, I need to praise him. And you can keep that on your mind for the rest of the day as something to kind of focus on, um, to encourage you and to remember what you've learned in the morning or whenever it is that you read God's words. And you can actually do that with any passage in scripture, but particularly the Psalms, if you wanted to just go through a Psalm a day, you could use that formula to meditate and study. And that's you studying God's word um, in a simple way. So, yeah, I'll leave that with you guys. If you want to use it, you don't have to. Mm. I think that's quite a simple and effective way of reading God's word, studying it and uh, allowing it to um, encourage your soul and challenge you at the same time. That's me. Any questions before we pray? I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>